morning, everyone. I'm Sandy Caldwell. Welcome to the eighth episode of Quilt Cabana Corner. On today's episode, we will be reviewing Laura Wozlowski's Fanciful Stitches and Colorful Quilts. This is her new book. And we'll also be looking at Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting. This issue is, I believe, the August one. Can't quite find it on here. Must be under the tag. And I'll also be sharing with you some projects that I finished up this week. It is the July-August issue. So grab your coffee and let's get going. So this week I'm really excited to have a few projects either in the works or finished. My first finished project of the week was this fusoscope that we've talked about before on the video cast. And I did get up early this week before the kids got up and really worked hard to finish this one. So here it is. This is fusoscope 3. And I put some free motion quilting in the background. Hopefully you can see it. Which actually makes this quilt pop, say, more than this one, which was the first one I did. And I suppose this is sort of like when a new model car comes out. Each version comes out a little better than the one before it. So I do love this one and I like the fact that it has the metallic threads. This was number one. And then down here, sorry if I sound out of breath, I just ran downstairs to get new batteries for this video camera, so I apologize for that. This was fusoscope number two, which I liked experimenting with a single kaleidoscope on it. And this also has the metallic thread. And then for fusoscope number three, I was determined not to use the metallic thread because I didn't want anyone to feel like you had to use metallic thread, especially if your machine doesn't care for metallic thread which sometimes happens. So this one was done with sulky thread and also with orophil. And once, I have to say, once I started with the orophil, <laughs> with the free motion, I didn't want to stop. I had um, zero thread breaks, no tangles. It was just really easy to use. And I actually only own one sample spool. So now I've got to go find where I can get it at a decent price because I really, really enjoyed working with it. So if you know where to get Orofil at a decent price, someone please let me know. You can let me know on the comments here or on my blog or on the contact form on my website. Anywhere is fine or so sandy 8 at yahoo.com. So that's my first, well, I guess it's my first finish of two this week. So hold on and I'll pull out the other. So after I finished up the fusoscope, I wanted an easy project, something quick to make up. So I decided to make up this drawstring backpack, which my kids had a nylon version of, and they like it because it's lightweight, and they can just sling it on their back and go. It's meant to hold a few items, not an entire day's worth of textbooks and stuff. Just a few things. Camera, sunscreen, off you go. And the ones they had were getting kind of ratty, so I thought it would be nice if I made one in cotton. And I did blog a little bit more in detail about this yesterday or the day before, so check the blog for detail. But basically, it's a half a yard of fabric. I had one in my stash. I went to Joann's and got this black cording, which turned out to be $1.79 a yard, and I needed two 68-inch length pieces, so that could be kind of pricey. So I went to Walmart, and for the next one, I got clothesline rope, which was 50 feet for under $3. And the piece of fabric that I have to make the next one will go very nicely with the white cord, so I'll give that a try. And then... I had to figure out how to set grommets, and when I was at Joann's, they had a grommet plier, but it was $26, and I thought, gee, if I only ever make one of these bags, I really don't want to sink $26 into a tool to do it. So I checked around the camping aisle at Walmart, and I found this nice little grommet set, which came with some grommets in it and a little tool, and you just use your hammer, and that's how you set them. And it was very simple to use, and again, that was under $5. So that's the little bag I made up, and I can't wait to make another one because, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it maybe took me, before grommet setting, 45 minutes to make the bag maybe. So a nice, easy project for in between the bigger projects. All right, so the next thing I'm working on is my sashiko, and I've been taking it out to the pool when the kids want to swim, and I'm going to set that up on the board to show you in a minute. Okay, so I received the Sashiko coaster kit from my mom as a Mother's Day gift. And so far I've made two and a half of the five coasters. 
Again, this is a design that comes pre-printed and it's a washout, so you wouldn't wash these ahead of time or you'd have no design to stitch. And it came with a thread and a little thimble, but I actually used my own because I like it better. And this was the first one I did. And I tried to get my stitches nice and even. And then this was the second one. Nope, I'm sorry, this was the second one. And I'll iron these out so that little bit of puckering should just press right out when I'm done. And then this is the third one. So I'm really excited to work on it. I think this one's coming out the best, but again, it's one of those things, you know, you learn as you go. And there should be no tightness with it. You really don't want any puckering. So it's when you're loading up three stitches on the needle and pulling it through, you really have to smooth it out after you run the three stitches through so that you don't get the pucker. So I'm still learning, but this is the back of it. And I'm really enjoying it. And it is something that, because it's a small size, it works out well for in the car or, like I said, when I'm watching the kids in the pool. So that's that project. So now the next thing I'm working on, besides finishing that up, I have another wall hanging that I'm working to finish up, hopefully, probably next week or the week after, because next week's a holiday. So that's kind of tough to get bang out some stuff with the holiday coming and we're hosting and all that good stuff. So uh, we'll see, but I want to work on that. And then I also have over here, and I was going to work on it this morning, but instead I decided to videotape this. So um, this whole pile is my apple cork quilt. And I have many more rows to go, but it's kind of mindless sewing. So maybe I'll get to work on that a little bit. And that's it for the cutting board. So let's move on to our magazine and book review. Okay, so for the magazine roundup, I just have one today, and it's Fonts and Porter's Love of Quilting, the June, <laughs> I keep saying June, July-August issue. There were a few things in here that I wanted to share with you. The first is, looks like a new thread holder from Superior Thread. There. And it says, the Superior Thread holder is perfect for both spools and cones for use with home machines. It has multiple threading options for specialty threads and can be used horizontally or vertically. Cone adapter and spool caps included $24.95. What I liked about this was that you can use it vertically or horizontally. I thought that was a good option. So there was that. And then, speaking of apple cork quilts, they had a nice one in here. This was designed by Deb Burton. And I like the colors. And, oh, isn't that just darling? I thought that was so cute. I love it. This is called Mr. Frog and Friends. It's an intermediate project, it says. And this was designed <clears throat> by D. Elda Whitmack. And I just thought the frogs were really super cute, especially for summer. And who do you think designed this one? Can you guess? Can you guess who makes the cutest floral quilts? That's right, Nancy Mahoney. Again, here she is um, with her garden time. And I know I said this maybe in the last episode, but her use of color and the way that she designs these quilts, I just, I fall in love with every single one. I have yet to make one because I always end up making my own patterns and hardly ever use another pattern. Um, once in a while I do, but not all that often. But um, if I were up for making a new quilt that I didn't dream up of my own, this would be it. So I really enjoyed looking at this one. Next we're going to be looking at another of my favorite designer people, Laura Wozlowski. This is her new book. So we're going to take a look at this in just one minute. So if you're familiar at all with Laura Wozolowski, you know that she is famous for fusible quilts that are small in size and very colorful and whimsical. So her first book showed us how to create those fusible quilts and this one does as well. But the difference between I think her last book and this one is the use of hand embroidery stitches on these quilts. And it really does make a difference in the texture of the quilt and the overall effect. Look how cute this is. I'm going to put it right up there. And here's the back. 
and while I'm on the back, this is a CNT book and it retails for $19.95. Um, I really love the colors in this and I like the fact that she takes you step by step, I'm trying to figure out the best way to hold this. She takes you step by step through the process of making the quilt. So she tells you all about fusing and then she shows you a before and after how the quilt looks before the stitching, how it looks after the stitching. And it really does make a big difference. And this book is all about different types of houses. That's the theme that she went with. So she's got lighthouse and a cottage and all different kinds of houses. Uh, the bulk of this book, I think the last half of it is all the um, templates to make these. So it's, um, it has a lot of good information in it, and it's got the templates, uh, but it's a pretty thin book. And here she's showing you how to do the process. And then she's talking about how to couch yarn on there because she does a lot of couching. Um, similar to Caroline Waugh's new thing, which is the Stupendous Stitching Book, and she's working with couching threads also. And she gives some stitching tips and tells you how to balance out the stitches so that you don't have too many in one section and not enough in another. And then she gives you a little library of stitches. <clears throat> I believe I counted up 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, more than that. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 stitches to try. <clears throat> which um, it's nice to have those right at your fingertips when you're working on your quilt. Here at the lighthouse. And then she says, stitch the house down quilts. So these are all of the quilt patterns that she's including. The forest home, the hill village. Hope you can all see this okay. Houseboat, lighthouse. Garden, cottage, and tree house. Nice neighborhood and quilt shop, my favorite one. These are really, really cute. She just has that something, that special something with her whimsical designs. Farmhouse and Bridge Keeper's Cottage. And I do like how the book has a theme. I like how it's all houses. Windmill, and then she talks about how to do a wrapped binding. And she also has some regular quilting on this too. Um, I mean, that all looks like it was machine stitched, not, not the hand embroidery stitches. Um, and then we get into the templates. So if you're a fan of Laura and you like to do hand embroidery stitching, this is a great, great book to have in your library. Um, I, the minute I saw it, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it because I just knew it was going to be so great because everything she does generally is so great. So if you are a fan and you want to give one of these a try, um, they're small projects and you can take them with you. They're portable. Once you fuse them, you can take the project on the road. So I'm looking forward to making something from this or adapting something from this and, and using some of her cool stitches. So I would definitely recommend this book and I think it would be a great addition to your library. So I think that about wraps up this episode of Quilt Cabana Corner. Thanks for joining me. Leave me a comment. Next time we'll maybe do some reader comments and I'll show you what else I have. And um, I don't know, we'll see what else pops up. So enjoy your 4th of July. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. Thanks for joining me and uh, come visit me on quiltcabanapatterns.com and go to the blog because that's updated frequently. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.